Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my productivity training videos. And in this video today, I want to share a getting started guide on how to get started with Text Expander. Text Expander is one of my absolute favorite productivity tools. I've been using it since 2015, so seven years this year. It is one of my favorite tools. It is one of the tools I download first when I get a new Mac because I have to have it on my machine because I rely on it so much throughout the day. So what is Text Expander first and foremost? It's an app available for the Mac or PC, and what it lets you do is store text, which you can easily retrieve later by typing a little abbreviation. So a really common use case for Text Expander is for things like email templates. So I can store some text in here, and this is text that I, I need to type again and again and again. So rather than having to copy and paste that from a note or a document that I've saved somewhere, I store it in Text Expander. And then when I type this little snippet down here, this little abbreviation, semicolon intro, I can type that anywhere on my computer where you can type text and Text Expander fills in that email that I've written. So really it helps you to spit out text for things like emails, uh, links that I need to store. I also use it with some of the apps that I use like Asana and ConvertKit. I even use it for things like correcting spelling mistakes that I make on a frequent basis. Now, before we get into the tutorial, I just wanna really drive home some of the efficiency gains that you can get through Text Expander. Here is a monthly report that I received uh, about a week ago. So last month I saved three and a half hours last month in January, just on typing. So that's nearly half a day's worth of time that I was able to save based on my average typing speed by not having to type out all the text or not having to copy and paste the text. So as you can see, it provides a really tangible benefit. Here's another report. This is my annual report from the end of 2021. So in 2021, I saved six days worth of time just on typing. So that's nearly a week of time I was able to save. You can see since I've started using Text Expander, I've saved nearly 24 days, coming up on a month, uh, month's worth of time based on typing. So again, this tool can really have a very tangible impact on your efficiency and productivity. So let's take a little look at how to create your first snippet in Text Expander. So firstly, you're going to need to register for Text Expander, create an account, and download the app onto your Mac or PC. I'm not gonna show that here because it's pretty straightforward. So I've downloaded the app now, and this is what it looks like on the Mac. In this sidebar on the left-hand side, I can see different folders of snippets that I've created. So I have this personal section. These are some of the folders and snippets that I've created for myself, for some snippets in Asana, uh, ConvertKit, which I use for email marketing. I've got a bunch of email templates in here, some links like affiliate links, uh, Calendly booking links, website links and things that I've stored that I often need to share on a regular basis. I've got some extra random snippets that I use for generating things like the date or my company's GST number, pipe drive, API keys, things like that. I've got a folder for shorthand little expressions and phrases I use on a regular basis. Some uh, folder for some of the text I need to use on my website for things like short codes and some, some workflows that I use as well. So these are all my own personal snippets in, in, in these different folders that I've created. And I can simply create a new folder up here and give it a name. So let's just say email marketing. And I can, I can create a new folder where all those uh, snippets go. Uh, but let's delete that for now. Moving down the sidebar, you also have an area where you can share snippets. This is great if you're working in a team. Let's say you're using Text Expander for sales or even for customer service, and you want your team to use the same language, and you really want there to be some consistency with how your team talks to customers. So I can create these shared snippets that I can update here, and everyone else on my team will, will get these updates. And then there is also a section on your sidebar for public groups that you can subscribe to. So these are available on the Text Expander website. And I can subscribe to things like uh, here's some autocorrect snippets. So you can see here, if, if you type and the without a space, that's quite a common sort of mistake that people make. If you're typing too quickly on the keyboard, you type and the, you forget to put in the space. You can see Text Expander will fix it to and space the. 
So there's a folder of common spelling mistakes. There's also this one that I've subscribed to, which is an emoji cheat sheet. So rather than having to search for the emoji, an emoji on the web or using the emoji picker, I can simply type colon alarm underscore clock end colon and the alarm clock emoji fills in. So you can explore and, uh, these, these snippet groups by clicking the plus button here and on the Text Expander website, you'll see all sorts of different groups of snippets that other people have created that you can subscribe to. So that is the left-hand sidebar which organizes all of the snippets. So let's say I want to create a brand new snippet for an email that I'm going to send on a regular basis. So I'm in my email folder. I'm gonna click the plus button up here and I'm gonna start my email with hi. And then I want to actually insert the person's name in here. Now I could just say name or some people will do some a line like that and sort of indicate that they need to fill this in later. But Text Expander uh, makes this really easy. I can type, uh, I can click this um, little icon here and there are all these different types of fill-ins that I can insert into my snippet. So I could insert a single line field and I'm just gonna call this name. I can give it a default value if I want, like John, but probably for this example, I, I wouldn't. So I'll just leave that blank for now. And so I click okay. So hi, name. Uh, I'll type in the body of my message. So let's just say, thanks for your message. Great to meet you, blah, blah, blah. Thanks. Okay, so I've got my email uh, ready to go. I need to give it a label down here. This is just uh, some way of identifying it. You can see here in the snippet list, if I don't put a label, it just uses the text here as the name. So I'm just gonna call this um, intro email. And then finally, I need to insert what's called an abbreviation. This is the, the little code I'm gonna write or type on my keyboard in order to expand this snippet and generate that text. So I'm just gonna use, uh, I like to use a semicolon as the start of my snippet. And then I can say, um, actually let's use something different. Let's do a slash intro, because I actually already have one called intro, so I'm gonna create a new one. So I'm gonna do slash intro. And so let's see an example of this in practice now. Let me bring over this um, note. Or well, actually no, let's use, let's use an email. Here we go. So I am gonna Put my cursor here. This is where I want my snippet to start or where I want the text to be um, generated. And then I'm gonna type slash intro. And you can see here, this little box fills, uh, pops up and I need to type in the person's name. So I can say, Steve. And there we go. Oh, I actually don't need the thanks there because my signature already has it. So maybe actually what I would do is probably remove that because my my signature already has it there. Uh, but there we go. So Text Expander has filled in the text. I don't need to type this out. I don't need to go into a note and copy and paste it. I just type that little abbreviation and the um, Text Expander does the rest. Now we can actually make this a little bit better. Uh, let's say with my email here, what I'd like to do is actually, I'd also like the subject line to fill in. What I can do, let's park this over here, is I can say, Let's use that name again. So I'm just gonna, oops, I'm gonna Command C to copy that and then Command V over here. And I'm gonna say name and let's say nice to meet you. Now what I actually need to do to make this work is when I type the subject, what I need to do before Text Expander then fills in the body of the email, I actually need to tab one, two, three, four, five times in order to get to that body. And Text Expander can actually do that for me. So if I click this little keyboard icon here, you can see Text Expander can emulate uh, different keys on the computer. So I can say tab. So let's copy that and I'm gonna paste that four more times. So what's actually gonna happen here is it's gonna fill name, nice to meet you in my subject. It's then gonna tab five times and then it's gonna generate the rest of the text. Uh, while I'm actually working on this, I'm just gonna show you a couple of other useful things that Text Expander can do. Um, if I go back to my fill-ins here, you can also put in a multi-line field. So I might say, you know, type something about the meeting. I can put in some default 
text here, but I'll leave that blank. So I just want to type in like a custom paragraph here. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna type that out when I when I write my email. I can also do things like I can um, include optional sections or pop-up menus. So let's say, let's meet. And then what I might do is say, let's do a uh, pop-up menu. Let's meet in person, or I could see say on Zoom. And let's just call this location. Okay, so I've added in this uh, drop-down menu. I can pick one of these uh, two, one of these two items, and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put in a space, and then I'm going to include an optional section, and I'm just going to call this Zoom, or Zoom link. There we go. I'm going to include it by default, and then anything I type in between these two, um, the Zoom link and end optional, will I can toggle that on and off. So I'll just say here, I'll send you the Zoom link. Okay, so now my snippet is ready to go. Maybe let's just remove that blah, blah. Uh, so now my snippet is ready to go. So it's got the person's name. It's gonna tab five times and then paste the email into the body. I've got an optional paragraph, a drop down menu, and an optional section as well. So let's see how that looks. So I'm gonna start my snippet in the subject field. I'm gonna type slash intro, text expander, appears and I can type in the person's name. Now the name, because I've used the same field in the subject and in the body, I only have to type this person's name once and it actually fills in both places. I can then say here, I can fill in this custom paragraph, I'm excited to meet and discuss the project. And then I can choose here, let's meet in person, or I can say on Zoom and I can enable or disable this optional sentence. So I'm gonna click OK, and let's watch what happens. There we go. So the subject was filled in with Steve's name, text expander tabbed one, two, three, four, five times, and then filled in the rest with the name. It included my custom paragraph, my drop-down menu item, and the custom or, or the optional sentence as well. Now I just want to point out a couple of other features that you can play with to make Text Expander do exactly what you want. Firstly, my snippet at the moment is set up just as plain text. So this will work basically anywhere I can type text on my computer. So in the browser, uh, in my mail app, in notes, anywhere. I can also change this to formatted text. And that way I can, I can make my text um, have bold and underline. And that way, if I'm typing this into an email or a Word document, for example, it's gonna include that formatting, which is nice. Text Expander also supports, for more advanced users, shell scripts, Apple scripts, and JavaScript, if you wanna get into some scripting and use that in your snippets as well. A Couple of the other things we can do to customize our snippets is you can put in things like a date macro. So if I want to include a date in my snippet, I could say, right, the day is 01 slash, and I'm gonna use European date format here. Let's do the month slash, and then the year. There we go. So it's gonna fill in the day, the month, and the year. But I can then also apply these date modifications. If I want to modify this date and add a certain number of years, days, months, seconds, I can actually do date modifications to these dates and months and years if I wanted to. So now if I, uh, let me bring back my email. Let's type that again. Intro, I'm just gonna hit enter. And you can see here now it's included today's date, the 14th of February, 2022. So that's uh, these date, data, Date codes, really, really useful as well if you do need to be using dates in any way in your snippets. I would also encourage you to have a look at Text Expander's preferences to kind of personalize it more to your liking. So there's some expansion options, uh, but I do find particularly useful is the suggestions. So if you enable this, what Text Expander will do is it will monitor the words, phrases, and things that you type on a regular basis. For example, if you're typing your email address a lot, Text Expander may suggest that you actually turn that into a snippet. So it's actively gonna suggest where you can save time. So I find that particularly useful. There are also some really useful hotkeys, uh, keyboard shortcuts basically for 
easily using Text Expander. Uh, the two that I use most often are if I close the Text Expander window, Control Option Command T will bring up the Text Expander window anywhere I'm working so I can easily access and edit my snippets. Or if I close that and bring up a note here, where if, when I've got my cursor in some text here, if I can't remember the snippet that I want to try and find, I can type Control Command T and uh, it brings up this search text expander field. So I can then type the name of my snippet and go up ah, there it was and I can generate it like that. So I don't always have to remember my snippets. I can use the text expander search and I actually do rely on that quite a lot um, if I am forgetting snippets. So that is an introduction to Text Expander. What I encourage most new users to do once you've signed up for and downloaded the app is start with some email templates because that's the thing that most people can relate to is there's probably emails that you send on a daily or a weekly basis that you need to type out again and again and again. Maybe you've got them saved in drafts. Maybe you have a Word document or a note somewhere with those templates or maybe you're just typing them out manually at the moment. But start with a couple of templates that you can save into Text Expander, and that's the easiest way to get started. But then, I mean, have a look at some examples here. I use it for things like links, um, addresses, email addresses that I need to send people on a regular basis. Basically, any time I need to use or generate or, or fill in some text that I might need to use again and again, um, I try and save that in Text Expander. Even if I can't remember the snippet, that's okay because I can use that search function to find it if I need to. So if you have any questions about Text Expander, please feel free to leave me a comment below this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.